So good morning. I believe I should start. Um, why we must think as citizens. I have to make, um, I have to make a confession. I've been working as an economist um, professionally also at the Financial Times for um, half a century for the Financial Times since 1987. I'm a believer in markets and the power of markets, economic globalization. But I also believe passionately in the Western legacy of democracy and in the value of the underlying idea of democracy, that of citizenship. And um, I believe democracy is in danger of dying. And the two big beliefs I have in markets and in democracy, though potentially strongly mutually support supportive, are now operating in contradiction to each other. And this is a profound realization to me, it's become obvious in recent years. And I think this has profound implications also for you, particularly uh, for business. It appears that I have very little time left. I'm afraid I've made a mess of this. I don't quite understand why. Um, that's uh, too much else on. In any case, let me very be very brief, since I apparently have four minutes left. Um, we are seeing the rise of populism and of demagogic authoritarianism worldwide. And we've seen it even in core Western countries, notably in the US and in a rather different way with Brexit in the UK. And I don't believe this development is in any way independent of what's happened to our economies. So what has happened to our economies that is relevant here we have left behind areas, large areas of our countries, many of them where the old industries used to exist, have been in terrible trouble for quite a long time. We have left behind people, particularly people without college education, which are in almost all our countries, well over half the population and will continue to be so for years. And this has created a great deal of anguish, stress, and fear, profound social changes, and some of those are, of course, exacerbated by perfectly natural and profound cultural and social changes, which have added to this stress. Why did this happen? Some of this happened because of perfectly natural causes that we didn't offset or didn't try to offset. Deindustrialization was inevitable and powerful. Technological change was inevitable and powerful. And globalization was fundamentally the right choice. It gave immense opportunities for many people around the world. But it didn't, this didn't happen just because of these economic forces. It happened because of the way we ran our economies. It is perfectly clear that we've seen enormous amounts of rent extraction across our private sectors, in the financial sector, but not just in the financial sector. Um, tax avoidance on a quite extraordinary scale, with of course enormous influence from private business and wealthy people on the tax system itself. Um, decline, very clear evidence of decline in competition. And of course the rise, this itself natural, of tech monopolies, platform monopolies, we have also chosen labor market policies that combine insecurity with extremely low wages, with really very little done to ameliorate the latter. And the emergence, therefore, of what some call the precariat. People feel a loss of dignity in work, a loss in important ways of the com comradeship they had in work. And then, of course, on the top of all this, there was a financial crisis which demonstrated two very powerful things. First, that the system will always bail out the best off, or so it seemed, that immense money would go to what looked an extremely unjust response to the crisis, in which those responsible were saved, 
and those who were largely innocent suffered. And um, this also led to the conclusion that the people in charge very visibly didn't know what they were doing. They weren't competent. And I think this led directly to the election of Trump. It led to Brexit. In This was a revolt of ordinary people, desperate ordinary people, against elites. Not a very productive one. So in the very small time I have left, I would like to stress one major point. If you accept this analysis at all, it is obvious that what business and business people do shapes the world in which they live, not just their businesses, the entire world, and particularly the political system. They have a responsibility to manage that system. Um, and therefore, um, it is central that they do not do so just in order to benefit their own businesses and their own pockets. If they do so, the underlying values of a shared civic life, which is the core idea of democracy, that we share a civic life, will collapse. Society will become feral and divided, and we will end up as dictatorships. Dictatorship is the normal way for humans to run their society. Elite For elites to be predatory is the normal way to run a society. If we go down that road, our democracies and our civilization, particularly I refer here to the Western world, will disappear. And that is why we must think as citizens. Thank you for listening to me. I'm very happy to take questions or comments if people can uh, give them to me. I don't know whether that's still possible. And of course, this has been a very, very brief version of the much bigger story, which I'm writing a book on. I have a number of questions. If I'm allow allowed to proceed, uh, I will answer some of them. I don't know whether anybody can still watch me. Um, um, somebody says that politics and democracy are mutually exclusive in both philosophy and practice. Well, that's what Plato thought. And he tried to create a form of non-politics politics, that is, say, ruled by the guardians and philosopher kings. It's never worked. Ruled by minorities uh, have always been predatory. The evidence on this is overwhelming. Um, people in power only respond to power. And democracy gives power to ordinary people. They may not use it perfectly. They clearly don't. But we know very well from history that without that broad sharing of power with the people at large, we end up with predatory rule, completely predatory rule. Uh, and some of the extremes in this case are dramatic. So I would say true politics, uh, the politics of a democratic constitutional state are only possible in, which ev in a situation system in which everybody has a say in politics. And we need to nurture that. Um, uh, the, there was a question about religion. Um, I believe very strongly that people need ethical values. If you look at the history of ethical values, uh, religion has obviously played a very important part. But it is also, I think, quite clear that systems of values can be extremely powerful because they're seen as defining the right way to live in societies which are not founded on religion. And in any case, religion cannot be commanded. Uh, so while I would like people to believe in the values I put forward, which I think of as humanistic values, and I would like them to believe for whatever re this for whatever reason they wish to, um, I can't command religious faith back, and I don't believe it's necessary. And if you look at the history of religion, it's certainly not sufficient for a democratic system either. Um, let's 
somebody asked me on the role of the World Wide Web in citizen engagement. I think we must recognize now that this has become, a, the web is a double-edged sword. Uh, 20 years ago, many people were very naive about it. They thought it only had upside. It would liberate us. It would extend knowledge worldwide. It would allow us to communicate freely. And it does. It has enormous benefits. But it has also allowed people to show their very worst tendencies, conspiracy mongering, the creation of echo chambers of people who only think like one another and reinforced their wildest prejudices, the exploitation of people's ignorance and insecurities. Um, so I think we've found that the World Wide Web is profoundly double-edged and can be very, very dangerous. Now, the last truly great, all the great communication technologies have been equally double-edged. Printing ended the medieval world. It's quite clear, it created the modern world. So um, we're going to have to work out ways of taming the web as well as using it. At the moment, I would say we, that is to say the causes I believe in, are losing. The web has proved a, an innovation we can't manage. And uh, so it's a threat to democracy. It's pretty clear that it has become a threat to democracy in important ways. And one of the themes of the book I'm writing is whether we can do something about that. Um, let me just answer one, um, one further question. I don't think I should go on much longer, probably. Um, the, um, the, uh, what do I think is the best way of individuals to try and counter the dictatorial strait that is being breeding under our elected democratic governments? That's really the most fundamental question. I write books and write articles. Um, I think people should be re-engaged in democratic politics, not necessarily in parties. I was addressing my remarks particularly to business and business associations. Um, many do a great deal of lobbying and they have to think, what are they lobbying for? Um, are these causes that are actually in the interests of the public? Um, or are they in their own narrow interest? Um, at the very least, I think, we have to start thinking very seriously about how we protect the democratic system from the influence of money. And um, it's a huge battle everywhere, particularly so in the US for well-known reasons. Um, but I do think businesses have to ask themselves whether what they're doing is democratically legitimate. Am I optimistic about this? No, in truth, I'm not. Um, uh, but so I think people should engage in social movements. They should engage in politics, parties. Uh, um, and if they are, have positions of power and influence in, 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 uh, in organizations that are really wealthy and influential, they have to think very carefully about how they use that influence. We cannot assume the system will stand. Um, I think I should probably stop there. I apologize for starting late, but I've actually been able to say the main things that I wanted to say. It is in all our hands to preserve the system that people fought for over centuries, for political freedom, civil rights, and the share of the public in public life. And it is being eaten out from within as I speak. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.